Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL P2 which is practicing our similarity statements. So these IXL problems just give you a series of triangles and they give you a statement down here to complete. So remember a similarity statement is just a statement and specifically with triangles it goes through each of the points of triangles um, that indicates that these two shapes in front of you are going to be similar. And how they work is let's say we have a corner X, right? X is gonna be 76 degrees. Well, we go over to our second triangle over here and we see that either D or E is going to be similar to it. For this triangle, it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna say it's similar to E. So X is similar to E. That means since X is the first letter in your similarity statement on the left side, E has to be the first uh, letter of your similarity statement on the right side. So like that. And then uh, the next letter in the statement is going to be Y. So X, Y. Y is going to be your 28 degree uh, point right there, your angle. And so that's going to translate over to F, right? That's also 28 degrees. Remember, all similar shapes have the same exact angles. The sides are a little different, but the angles are going to be the exact same. Um, so because Y is the next letter, that means F is going to be the next letter in the right side of your statement. And then lastly, uh, we go to Z, which is our third letter, and which corner is going to correlate with that one. Well, that's going to be our last corner here, D. So your similarity statement is going to be triangle XYZ is similar, a little squiggly or tilde, as it means similar to triangle EFD, and that's gonna be correct, okay? Uh, you're gonna face a similar deal here, so we'll, we'll do this one real quick. So it says complete the similarity statement, PQRS, all right? So we'll go to P and indicate which corner of your second shape over here is uh, corresponding with P. Uh, again, there's a couple of different correct choices here. We'll go with D up here, we'll say P and D are similar, okay? So we'll write D first. Then it's P, Q, R, S, so Q is next. So if we go down here, it, uh, we're gonna go straight down the short side of our rectangle. So we'll go up to D, and just like from P to Q, we'll go D to E through our short side, and E is going to be our next letter, okay? R uh, is gonna be the next one, so we're gonna jump uh, again toward the next letter through the longer side and so that is going to be B. Okay and then lastly we go to S uh, and then that's going to correlate with C and that is our similarity statement because similarity statements have to correspond like this. You can't just write them willy-nilly. Each letter from the left side has to correlate with their letter on the right side. That's how we know they're similar. Okay. Same problem as the first one, so we're gonna skip it. Okay, here's a better one. So it says on the left we have triangle IJK, IJK, and we have to write a similarity statement. So angle I right here has to correspond with the angle at the same degree measure. So it's gonna be 83 right here, E. So that means I has to correspond with E. E is gonna be first. And then J is our second letter. J is the 56 degree angle, so we'll go over to the second triangle, see G is our 56 degree angle, that's going to be next, and then K is going to be 41, and then F is going to be 41, so that is our similarity statement. Okay, so now I'm going to skip a ways, skip again, skip again. Okay, so now we're going to get two questions that basically just ask you whether these shapes below are similar. So remember the key here with similar shapes is that their angles are always going to match up or be the same. And so if the angles are not matching up, they are not gonna be similar. So we go over here, we see the corner piece right here. Uh, U is 25 degrees and it looks like kind of the corresponding side over here is 35. So those are different angles. And then if you go to 58 and 97 and 59 and 86, those are all different degree values for uh, the triangles, right? So definitely not similar. Again, similarity uh, uh, statements and similar triangles need to have those uh, correct 
matching angles. Okay, are the polygons below similar? Um, so let's look at the angles here. So we know all three of these, or all four of the angles of either one of these shapes have to add up to 360 degrees, right? So this missing angle plus 52 plus the missing angle plus 52 equals 360 degrees. And so what we'll do is we'll take a copy of this and we'll just write that out algebraically. So we'll start with the first one and we'll go uh, 52 plus, we'll just say X plus 52 plus X. And the reason why we can say these are both X is remember um, with the angles, if the amount of rings on a certain angle matches up with another part of the shape, they are going to be the same. So one ring here and one ring here means that these two angles are going to be the exact same. Just like over here on the second um, the second shape, these two rings and these two rings, uh, th that means those two are going to be the same there. Okay, so that means we can put them both equal to x and then the whole equation to 360. So we'll combine like terms. 52 plus 52 is 104 plus 2x equals 360, we'll subtract 104, 104 from both sides. We're left with 2x equals 256, and then divide both sides by 2, and we have 128. Okay, so we'll, we, we see that these two angles are both 128. Is that going to correspond with any of these angles here? No. It says these angles, the supposedly similar angles are 139 degrees, which does not match up, which means these two are not going to be 52. So that is going to be a no. Okay. Um, what else? Okay. Uh, so you can look at both of these uh, trapezoids right here and you can see that all of the angles are similar. They're matching up. So we look at the top two angles right here at S and T, and then the corresponding ones at F and G. And you see that they all have just one ring, right? So if they all just have one ring, that's going to mean they're all the same angle. And then down here, the two bottom corners and the two bottom corners all have two rings, meaning they're all going to equal the same thing. So all of the angles are going to be the same. Okay. Um, so it's looking good for us, but we are looking at another problem here. Not only do all of the angles have to match up, all of these sides have to be proportional. So we look at one side of the trapezoid here, which is 8, and then we look at the corresponding side, which is 12. So we can write a proportion ratio or a fraction between those two sides as 8 over 12, right? Like we went over in class. But when you go over to the top side up here, both of the lengths here remain 4 which doesn't add up, right? The proportion ratio uh, for one shape to the other has to correspond with every single side measurement, not just one of them. So even though the two eights and the two twelves can match up that way, the 14 and the 19 do not, and the four and the four, they actually stay the same. So these shapes are not similar because even though the angles are the same, the same proportion ratio does not stand for every single uh, measurement of the two shapes. So we're going to say no for that one. Okay, so this is the last one I will do. Are these polygons below similar? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at two things. One, we're going to look at the angles, and then two, we're going to look at the sides. So number one, are all the angles matching up? Yeah, it looks like X and R, Y and S are all going to be the one ring angle, so they're all the same, and then the rest of them are gonna be two. So all the angles match up, great. Two is we're gonna see if all of the sides match up. And what I mean by match up is if they are proportional, right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to set up proportion ratios. We're gonna make sure uh, the tops are the same ratio as the sides. So what that's gonna look like is we'll go top over top, equals side over side. 
And so we'll go four over 10 equals six over 15. And we'll see if this matches up. Okay, and how we're gonna do that is we're gonna cross multiply here. Do the helicopter method. Four times 15 is 60 and 10 times six is also 60. Okay, so those are similar then. Those are, those are gonna equal the same thing. So now we gotta match and make sure the last measurement is similar as well. So we'll do, it doesn't matter if you do the top or the side since we know they are now proportional. We'll just do the top for simplicity's sake. So we'll go four over 10 equals eight over 20. Okay, so again, we'll cross multiply here and four times 20 is gonna be 80 and then eight times 10 is gonna be 80. So those match up as well. So we're all good then. That means these two shapes are indeed similar because one, all of the angles match up and two, all of the sides match up. Perfect, perfect. Back, yes. Oh, okay. Complete the similarity statement and then write the ratio. Okay, I guess. So we will, uh, let's see. So it says VWXY, VWXY. So we'll start at our corner down here, which looks like T is going to correspond with, followed by W. So we'll go along the, the long side, right? End up at Q and then go up to X. So go up to R and then finish at Y. So finish at S, all right? And then uh, simplify the similarity ratio and write it as a proper fraction, improper fraction, or whole number. Okay. So the similarity ratio between the two is going to be uh, it's going to be ten over four, which simplifies to five over two. Okay. So we'll do that. And that is going to be correct. Okay, that is uh, where I'm going to end the video. So study hard, stay safe, and I'll see you for the next IXL tutorial. Goodbye.